We all know chocolate is delicious, but whoever came up with the idea of spreading chocolate onto bread was a genius. But how do you get cocoa beans and hazelnuts to stay on your toast? To make this popular nutty chocolate spread, first we need cocoa. The raw beans grow on trees in countries like the Ivory Coast, where workers have to toil in extreme temperatures to harvest them. They're spread out to dry in the tropical sun, and after 10 days, they're perfect. They're then bagged up and transported round the world to places like this chocolate spread factory here in Europe. They're now headed for the roasting ovens. The beans are almost 50% cocoa butter, and roasting reduces them to a liquid paste. However, this butter solidifies at room temperature, and you'd never be able to spread it on your toast, so it needs to be removed. To do this, the paste is sent to these enormous presses, which squeeze every last drop of butter out. The liquid butter is sent on to be used in other products, but what emerges from the machine is a chocolate lover's idea of heaven. Each disc weighs 7 kilos. They look like big blocks of makeup, but in fact they are pure compressed cocoa. They're sent off to be crushed, ready to be added to the mixing bowl. Next come hazelnuts, and plenty of them. The traditional recipe for a spread like this means there's the equivalent of about 50 nuts in each jar. Before they're allowed in, the quality controller uses his special guillotine to chop a sample in half. Worms can get into the nuts or they can go off, and that would ruin the spread. When he's satisfied that he's got good nuts, they're sent to be processed. They need to be cleaned and roasted before they can join the chocolate, so they all head for the ovens. It's important that each jar of spread looks and tastes the same, so any poor quality nuts are sorted out and then sent off to be used in other recipes. A computer-controlled blast of air flicks out the bad nuts, leaving only the best behind. They're joined by the pure cocoa powder, sugar, vanilla and skimmed milk in an enormous tank. Here they're mixed into the smooth paste that so many people love. The factory has now got enormous tanks of spread, but to get it to your table, they also need jars. Using recycled glass, these enormous furnaces produce tons of containers every day. Chocolate spread is so popular that worldwide sales of the brand leader outsell all brands of peanut butter put together. The furnaces have a lot of work to do to keep up with demand. Once it's ready, the molten glass is then sent to a machine which wouldn't seem out of place in a Hollywood sci-fi movie. This is the jar maker. Each blob of molten glass is shot into one of these molds. Here, they're pressed into the shape of the jar. The next machine ensures that the screw thread for the lid is included, and that's it. To make sure there are no imperfections, the fresh jars pass under a series of flames. This seals any small holes there might be in the glass. They're then cooled with a quick blast of water and get sent to a room where they'll sit for two days at 30 degrees Celsius. If you were to put hot spread into cold glass jars, you'd get condensation and moisture. No one wants that. When the jars are ready, they're passed under these pipes and filled to the brim. All that remains now is to seal them up. Here, lids are being sorted. They only work if they're the right way up, and this ingenious machine only uses ones that are facing the right way around already. The rest have to try again. Within each lid is an airtight seal, but how does that attach to a new jar of spread? As a full jar passes beneath this machine, it pastes a layer of glue onto the rim. When the lids are added, this glue traps the seal and the job is complete. So, if you're a confirmed chocolate nut, put down that marmalade and grab yourself a jar of world-famous nutty chocolate spread.